Peace and love, peace and love, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode coming to you from fate.org. Yes, P-H-A-E-T, fate.org, the People's Honorable Alliance for Exposing the Truth, and I am your host, the Wordsmith. Yes, the Wordsmith. Today I've got a very, very special topic that I'd like to talk about with y'all today. Some more of a person than a topic or a an entity, a consciousness, if you will. Someone who, well, at least for my generation, right? I'm an 80s baby. Straight up 81 in the house. Where my 80s baby's at? <laughs> yes. Yes, this man came into our lives and definitely has left an indelible mark on it. Through the vehicle of comedy. And in more recent times. Through spirituality and consciousness. And he's really, really, really trying to see just how deep the rabbit hole goes and, you know, immerse himself in the mystery and in the everything. And he's trying to bring this to us and bring this to the people. And for a man in his position, I think it's fantastic, you know, for, for, for someone in his position to be doing that, the way he's doing it, just all out, no holds barred, balls to the wall, this is who I am now. This is what I figured out, and I want you to know it too. I mean, it's just really, 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 really special. And if you haven't yet figured out who I'm talking about, we are talking about the mask, or the man behind the mask, or the consciousness behind the man behind the mask. That's right. A.K.A. Ace. Ace Ventura. A.K.A. Bruce Almighty. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Carrey. The man is awake. And when I say awake, I mean awake. I mean, he he has launched himself to a whole nother level of understanding. A whole nother level of self and a whole nother level of, of, of oneness. And he's given some incredible, incredible speeches, which I think really began uh, in 2009, I think was his kind of, you know, his coming out, uh, his coming out speech. And just, just so that you can, you know, get a, get a taste of what we're talking about, if you haven't already, I mean, even if you have, just to kind of, you know, let you taste it tasted with your mind and every part of you right now as you're listening and as we're going through this as we begin the journey into this little podcast here which by the way I do try to do as ad hoc as as possible as on the spot off the top of the head a few basic points and just flow because of course there needs to be direction yes but I don't want it to be a overly scripted scenario you know it's really got to be something more uh, palpably real and palpably genuine so I'm just gonna be here with you in the moment so you know I just really felt that it was important to to make note of this because what Brother Jim is doing is really, really, really big. And I, it can't, it just can't, it can't go unnoticed. Not that it's unnoticed. I mean, he's got ridiculous amounts of views on these speeches, but I still think he could get a lot more. And I think that the message is very important. And I think that, you know, a lot of people can, could stand to gain a lot from from what he has experienced 
in these recent years. So, I'm going to take a little pause and bring to you a snippet, a short snippet of a speech that Jim Carrey did June 4th, 2009 at the GATE inaugural event. Okay, and just for those of you who don't know what GATE is, it's G-A-T-E, it stands for the Global Alliance for Transformational Entertainment. I definitely need to look a little more into that because just that title alone sounds wonderful and the fact that Jim's a part of it and everything that he had to say at the, you know, in this speech, which you could find a longer version of online. And But the Global Alliance for Transformational Entertainment sounds like some really good people getting together to do some really good stuff and kind of, you know, steer more projects um, that are going to really move people and start to unlock much of what has been off limits to them for a long time. You know, limitations imposed by society and limitations imposed by the self. So here it is. Take it away, Jim. Let them know what time it is. Yeah. A few months ago, after knowing Eckhart Tolle for a while and studying the books, I woke up and I suddenly got it. I understood suddenly how thought was just an illusory thing uh, and how thought is responsible for, if not all, most of the suffering we experience. And then I suddenly felt like I was looking at these thoughts from another perspective and I wondered who is it that's aware that I'm thinking and suddenly I was thrown into this expansive amazing feeling of freedom from myself from my problems I saw that I was bigger than what I do I was bigger than my body. I was everything and everyone. I was no longer a fragment of the universe. I was the universe. And ever since that day, I've been trying to get back there. <laughs> it comes and it goes. It's like riding a wave. Sometimes I'm on, sometimes I'm off. But at least I know where I want to go. And that I want to take as many people with me as I possibly can, because the feeling is amazing. <laughs> wow. Wow. Way to be, Jim. Hey man, just wanted to thank you, you know, for those words and your full speech and yeah, so let's keep that going, let's keep that going. Jim Carrey, you are the topic today, my brother, Jim Carrey. Jimmy Jim, we gotta sit down and chop it up, man. I hope you get to tune into this podcast at some point. I'm currently in New York. That would be home base, but you know, we're universal. Just hit me up, man. So, you know, what I'd like to do also is kind of, you know, point out, I'd like to point out, you know, some other really interesting films and achievements and, um, you know, parts of his body of work that 
really have have done great things to the human psyche. You know, creating really nice kind of behind-the-scenes butterfly effect happening in the consciousness. You know, and and you know things that we all kind of do in our own little way. But he's got a couple of films in particular. You know. Um, Truman Show, absolutely outstanding, outstanding, and I definitely have some some questions about that that I would like to ask to ask you, Jim. Some that we could definitely get into on recording. Some that I don't know. Maybe we'd have to have to discuss off the record. I guess that'll be up to you when the time is right. You know, but the idea is is right on point i mean you know the concept is 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 similar enough in nature to the matrix you know being watched being in the system everything else around you the environment everything being this kind of uh stage if you will a setup you know and um you know, one of the things that really also blew my mind now, and I'm going to take you in a few different places, but, you know, once you really start going down the, this, this, uh, extremely exciting and humbling and consciousness altering rabbit hole. You know, you find out a lot of things and then you start to see connections and you start to piece things together and you you notice a lot more than you did before, you know, and you you watch certain certain films or listen to certain songs and you hear them differently, you see them differently with your new set of of knowledge. With your new understandings and with your new frequency that you vibrate, that you resonate at, as you're doing these things, right? So, you know, if you're a Tesla fan, and uh, to be clear, especially to the millennials, I got nothing against you, but to be clear to the millennials. Um, You know, and a lot of just the public at large, when I say fans of Tesla, I am not, I'm not talking about Elon Musk. I'm not talking about the Tesla vehicle or the Tesla company. I'm not talking about any of those things. I'm talking about the real Tesla, Nikola Tesla, Serbian genius. Who invented so much, postulated so much, and was trying to do so much for humanity, not just, you know, the usual state of affairs like the Edisons of the world who steal inventions and put them out just to make as much money, you know, capitalize as, as much as possible on. No, I'm talking about the real Nikola Tesla. So if you know anything about Tesla and you get into his science and you get into the deeper aspects of uh, vortex-based mathematics and things along those lines. You come to find out that the numbers 3, 6, and 9, as Brother Tesla put it, as a matter of fact, let's quote the man. He said, If you understood the power in the numbers three, six, and nine, you would have keys to the universe. Keys to the universe. That can you do you know do you fathom? Do you really fathom what the man is saying? I want you to really, 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 really meditate on that. He didn't say you'll you'll understand math very well. He didn't say you may understand the universe. Uh, you know, you'd have a, a foot up on, on certain areas of science. He didn't say, yeah, you'd be able to do some cool equations and 
No, no. The man said, if you understand the power, the power in the numbers three, six, and nine, he said that you will have keys, keys to the universe. That's really serious. That's really, really a heavy statement if you think about it. Nine, of course, you either, some of you may know and some of you will find out. Nine is, of course, the most powerful of all the numbers. It's deep. Once you really go down and you sit down with the pen and paper and you, you watch the right things and you, you take the time to visually and mentally go through the mathematics and understand and see the beauty and see the signs and the signature left in there the signatures of design I promise you it will rattle your world in a great way well to come back to what I was saying there was a part there are many parts but there was a part in the Truman Show where an object falls from the sky and the object that falls you know Truman he's there and he hears it and he, he walks over and he walks over and he looks at this object and it's a it's a light and it says serious on it so you've got this light right a light or a star that falls from the sky between two pillars okay when you look at the frame you'll see that the light that fell landed between two pillars and when he picks it up it says on a Sirius 9 Sirius is the dog star and if you look into Freemasonry you find out right that there is a reference to the stairway to Sirius between two pillars that's right Telling you, man, this stuff is deep. And why nine? Why serious nine? Nine being the most powerful number. Okay, and when you when you really start digging further into Sirius, and you find out the connections to ancient Egypt and the goddess Isis. When you find out about Sirius B, okay, you got Sirius A and Sirius B. It's a binary, binary stars. So this binary of Sirius, Sirius B has some incredible, incredible, incredible history. That some might call mythology, but there's just it's just too deep and there's too much information for it to be mythology. Look up the Dogons. Look up the Dogon tribe and what they have to say. How how old they are, where they're from, and how old their knowledge is, how how many thousands of years their history goes back, and they still directly today can tie it to Sirius B, which they themselves don't even have the technology right now in 2018 to look at. But they've got a whole history linked to Sirius B. It's D. Look it up. Dogon. D is in David. O. G. O. N. As in Nancy. Dogon. The Dogon tribe. You know, and you know, once you really start going into and digging into these things, you come across all this stuff and there's just so much and there's so, so much connectedness that you find once you start looking at the stories from all the different parts of the world, all the different cultures, all the different tribes, all the different 
secret and mystical societies. Then another film that he did, Man on the Moon. Well, actually, you know what? Let, let me keep going for a minute on Truman Show. Because the messages, there's, there's many messages in there, are really deep. And one of the one of the other ones that I really wanted to kind of kind of impress upon you is, you know, every time, you know, when he starts when he starts thinking really for the first first time in his life and he starts thinking really thinking the system around him they get nervous they get scared that he's going to figure something out he's going to realize what's going on right so they quickly get into action and start tailoring things around this little blip of consciousness he's having and they try to deter it and they, they create new stories and, and new things that will distract him from and make him question these thoughts that he's having. Yeah, I'm curious how many people out there you know what the ratio is of people who just still have not gotten to a point where they actually stop to think versus how many of them may have had moments where they started to think and then were distracted and sidetracked and you know shown the woman in the red dress or whatever was used by the system which is at play against the waking of the people and their consciousness so you know the trick is as soon as you catch one whiff one inkling that there's something more happening here you grab a hold of that you grab tight and you run with it And you get your mental mystical shovel out and you dig and you dig and you dig and you dig and you don't stop digging. And you're going to realize a whole lot about yourself, the world around you, people. And once you know the things that you will then know, the things that you come to know. And you'll know you know them because the information that's out there is too real and too sound and coming from too many places and too many different times so you'll know and 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 for, for many of you at least I hope you know it'll resonate with your gut and it'll resonate with you where you know you didn't even need to go through all of the extra hours of, of verification you know you just you know there are things that when you know you know because you can feel that it's the truth the same way you know many of us that are on this path and many of us that are you know have awakened or are awakening or, or want to wake up you know you you watch the news and I mean you just know you could smell the bullshit through the screen you can see it on their face. On their faces. You know, and that's a whole other thing. You know, getting into the the psychology and the, 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 the psyops, right? The psychological operations, the attacks upon you on a daily basis. Especially through the media, especially through news, especially through the anchor people. Who are looking into the camera the lens or the eye of the camera into your eyes, directly into your eyes, implanting whatever words and thoughts it is that the owners of these, these stations who are global players, it's the message that they want you to have and the feelings they want you to feel, which usually is fear. 
but rest assured, my brothers and sisters, there is no cause and no need for fear. Because there is a very, very significant resistance happening. There's too many people now. I mean, I've been awake for as long as I can remember. It just took me some time to actually get to looking through the information and, and sorting through and finding out and listening to experts and people that, you know, had knowledge and experience on all these subjects from all the different sectors and, and just digest all of it one at a time, one by one, piece by piece, and put the whole picture together, you know. Or at least parts of what's even an even bigger picture than the picture. Right. But my point is that there is a very strong movement happening to not only wake others up, but to provide solutions, technological and otherwise, to so many of the problems that are plaguing modern society whether that be in first world second or third so Truman Show was great Truman Show was fantastic it really made you think and wonder you know what's really all this about who's really watching you know who who is that eye in the sky directing it all is it is it the creator is it oneself are we all just inside of a, a big computer game simulation and, and the real self is out there watching or some other self is out there watching? I mean, you know, it's, a, it's, it's really quite interesting when you get down to it, but at least you know that things here are not at all what we've been told that they are. That much you should at least be sure of, and if you're not, well, no problem. Take your time. But do it quickly. <laughs> you know, check out the website. Look through the information. There's a lot there. There's still a lot more that I can still put together and put there. And things I will be adding over time. You know. Please support. Any way you can. Just go to the site and donate if you can. Anything you want to do to help it is so deeply appreciated. You know, I've kind of been on this journey for a long time and, you know, just in really in this last year, um, finally making the proper effort to bring, to bring this all to you, you know, to be able to engage you on this type of a level, you know, if I had started when I really when I really started, when I, you know, was really in the digging stages, I'd already be up there like uh, some of the big dogs who wound up, you know, starting before I did. But hey, it's okay. The point of the story is, or the, the, the objective, is that people are listening and people are thinking and people are questioning. That's really been the, the idea the whole time, you know. And, you know, the small group of us that have been pushing for that with our energies and you know, I guess have played a role in manifesting that. So Truman Show, and of course you gotta break down the name, is the true man show. The true man. What is who is the true man? Is it your friends? Is it your family? Is it your job? None of these things are the true man, are the true you, the true woman. It's a, it's a, it's a, a journey of self-discovery and, and self-realization into a state of self-awareness, which allowed him to break from that cycle of fakeness and monotony and and a. Uh, fraudulent happiness that he was living you know he knew things were missing you just have to be ready to hear it when the call comes in 
Jim Carrey in Man on the Moon. Moon Man on the Moon. Wow. You know, I've heard things about certain actors and certain abilities that they have when they get into these roles of people. Actual people who they're playing. I won't get into that just yet. Maybe I'll wait till we get Jim on the line. Or on the show, rather. But, um, when I tell you that man was Jim Carrey was Andy Kaufman. He didn't play Andy Kaufman. He wasn't act acting like Andy Kaufman. He was Andy Kaufman. He was. And if you watch it, you'll see that. If you have watched it, you must have seen that. The same way Jamie Foxx was Ray Charles in the movie. And when I saw it in the theater when it came out, I saw it. I said to myself right away, I don't remember how long into the film, but it didn't take long. I said, this man is going to win the highest award for this. And he did. He won Best Actor Academy Award. He won the Oscar. Because you, you could tell this is not a scenario where it's, you know, they're acting like the person. They are they are the person who's so the person and you cannot differentiate between the two and you have to question now who's really who really is there so you know and I think the ability to do that is something that you know it's in alignment with what we're talking about here because it brings you you know, in that process, you, you're you in that other space, you're in that extra dimensional space, you're in that, the expanse of consciousness, you're there, swimming around and walking around, having a field day, letting go of everything else, and allowing that process to happen and take over. Eternal sunshine of the spotless ill mind. Another great mind twister out of the camp of Carrie. Now I'd also like to go ahead and play a snippet now from another great, great speech that Jim Carrey gave. This was at the 2014 Maharishi University of Management graduation ceremony at which Jim Carrey gave the commencement address. And again, you know, once you're going down these rabbit holes, you know these things. So you would know what I'm talking about when I say the Maharishi. Anything. If you don't, you better catch up. I'm not saying you don't know anything, but you need to catch up. That you need to do. Okay. So it's during my the early days of looking into quantum physics and um, you know it was a film a really great film if you haven't seen it yet it's really kind of taken aback I mean let me get the year for you here real quick so the original film yeah it's exactly what I thought it came out in 2004 it's called what the bleep do we know what the bleep do we know? We all know what that bleep is, in case you don't. The actual title would be, without the asterisks, 
the hashtag, the star, and the exclamation point of view. What the fuck do we know? What the fuck do we know? We will, and it, it's asking that question because the science in it, the science to go over the theories, the the revelations in quantum physics, and so much has happened since then. This is again dating back to October uh, of 2004 released precisely on October 22nd, 2004. And what the bleak do we know definitely sent me down the rabbit hole of quantum physics at the time. Okay, and I had already kind of been touching upon some of the concepts and, you know, I got into some ideas like synchronicity and things like that from, you know, the Deepak Chopras and, um, you know, a number of other people at the time that were that were speaking to these to these topics and in these uh, in, in these orbits and you know it was diving into that that it led me to um, one of the particular physicists who was in the film and um, the guy who, one of the people who still, they all stuck out to me, but one of, well, a lot of them did, but for purposes right now at this moment, we'll talk about John Hagelin. And it was John Hagelin and what he was saying about string and string theory, you know, at the time, that, that really was so interesting to me about, you know, how everything, when you boil it down, everything is, is vibration. Everything is vibration and sound. You, me, the, the garbage bag under your kitchen sink, the fan in the living room, the light bulb lighting up your hallway, the wheel on your car, the bird in the tree. Every single thing is not only made up of frequency, but has a frequency that it vibrates at. And so, John Hagelin, you know, put me down that 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 rabbit hole of of string theory and quantum physics, and that led me to David Lynch and the David Lynch Foundation, who who John Hagelin uh, was working with, and that led me to go to an event at NYU at which John Hag um, uh, yeah John Hagelin spoke, and so did uh, David Lynch, and that was you know that little one-two punch. Uh, and John Hagelin were, were speaking heavily about TM. TM is Transcendental Meditation. Um, transcendental Meditation is something that probably, I'm sure, I know, is a, a much older ancient tradition and concept, but the more modern purveyor and propagator and teacher of this spiritual science was Maharishi okay and at the time when I started looking into everything I found out that the Maharishi their organization that they set up the Maharishi Institute were really trying to do incredible things and I think they've done a lot of that since then I haven't I haven't really followed you know as much as I'd like to just trying to accomplish so many things but you know they were they were trying to build schools and partner with schools that had an entire you know different type of curriculum that would add a whole you know new dimensions and new components to the education system for kids and really turn out brilliant creative activated thinkers you know as opposed to the uh, robot drones that our present education system is was designed specifically to churn out, right? Non-creative, non-thinking worker bees to be the cogs and the wheels that keep the machine going. So anyway, just a little background there so you understand who is the Maharishi University of Management surrounds the, the life work of Maharishi himself and the Maharishi Institute and um, you know people who are 
on the more conscious side and and thinking and looking for innovation and looking for for new ways to do things and new ways to understand the self and the universe so it's really you know everything really kind of ties into each other i was not surprised when i found that he had done a commencement address at the maharishi university of management um, given given where he is right now you know and where he's going it was it was just to me it was like the perfect perfect pairing it was like it just made sense it's like okay okay jim thank you there you go all right and how awesome for the students there how awesome for them to have jim actually i believe graduating with them if i'm not mistaken i, I could be wrong I, mean, I guess i'll have to double check that but it seemed that he too went through a process and you know, was also graduating himself, I think. I, I'm not positive, but he made reference to, you know, having a room there at the at the uh, university. And, um, you know, he unveils a massive painting that he did that literally took thousands of hours. So, you know, it kind of leads one to think that he probably... He probably ran the course there. So, so way to go, Jim, brother Jim Carrey. And I just, you know, what else I have to, I, I got to bring this up. You know, it's kind of sad. I, I just found out that the story that had been circulating. Well, I didn't just find out, but you know, the story that had been circulating that Jim Carrey was going to be playing Terrence McKenna in the biopic. I was so excited about that. Jim, 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 Jim. Man, you would be a bomb, a bomb Terrence McKenna. A bomb Terrence McKenna, bro. I really wish you were playing that. You would, you would really, 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 really bring incredible truth to that role. I know you would just go and, and find, find Terry and you know, throw your arms around and grab them and bring them out for everybody to see. So I, I really wish that uh, that that was the case. I was very excited about that. Maybe we'll get to see it at some point. But more importantly is that now, you know, Jim is familiar with the... insights we'll say you know of Terence McKenna and Jim I watched you on a couple of things I watched that the way you handled that reporter on the red carpet absolutely classic man I mean <laughs> you, Jim you had me rolling man you had me rolling After she tried to sandbag you, and she turned it around and hit her with some universal true shit that she just couldn't even, she couldn't even respond to because she is so far removed from those levels of understanding. And she couldn't even come up with, she had nothing to say. What, what could she say? How could she answer? How could she really respond? Mm -mm. <laughs> well done, man. Well done. And again, I saw you recently on... Um, with driving celebrities driving and having coffee or whatever it is with uh with jerry seinfeld i found that one very interesting too I, and i you know i connected with you in several several moments i love the way you told that waitress that she's not who her name is she's not who she thinks she is and <laughs> she'll find out <laughs> She'll find out otherwise. She's like, no, no, I really do think I'm a Beth or whatever her name was. And they're like, yeah, you'll find out that you're not. <laughs> oh, Jim, you're killing me, man. <laughs> I love it. And another moment that you, you had in there, you know, we were talking about 
films, you know, certain films that had impact on you. And the, one of the ones that you brought up and the scene that you brought up and the reaction that you get every time you see that scene. Matt, thank you so much for bringing that up because I actually bring it up relatively often too. I talk about that film a lot and um, I talk about, well, I mean, I've talked a lot about that moment, but that is definitely the moment. And we're talking about in Field of Dreams, you know, when, when his dad, you know, when he and his dad finally get to have that catch and you know, that's kind of all he wanted, you know to make up for all the lost time and things that went unsaid and you said how could you not see that how could you not be watching at that moment and how could you not just fucking weep and you know what man hey that's one of those ones that gets me to every time every time Yeah, it's a powerful moment. It's heavy. It's heavy. If you really are feeling it, if you really are allowing yourself to be fully immersed in the film, and you know, the more I, the more I, I, I watch with people, I notice so many people just don't know how to even how to even watch a film. They talk to it. They get up. They don't pause. They do this. They do that. I mean, I don't. I don't. You know. Especially, if, you know, if it's, a, if it's a BS movie, okay, whatever. But when it's a heavy movie, a deep movie, one with a strong message, you know, I mean, how do you, I don't know, I, I don't understand. You know, you, you have to sit down, you have to empty your mind, clear it of everything, get rid of all your thoughts, beliefs, stresses, get rid of everything out and gone. Get rid of yourself. And you gotta allow yourself to go in and become the character, become the protagonist, you become the main character. And you go through everything that he or she is going through, the ups and downs, and you, you be them. And you allow yourself to feel those feelings. That's the whole purpose. That's what the whole thing is about. And you get to learn, you get to learn from, from what's happening there. And, you know, learn about how it makes the, the, the person feel, how it makes the, those around them feel. And, you know, it can be a very moving experience if you would just get yourself out of the way and allow it to be, you know, that's the point. And, you know, a lot of great, great actors and directors and you know, these people choose the films they choose for very specific reasons, for very specific emotions and ideas that they're trying to, to get across to you. And if you're if you if you if you miss anything if you don't let every word and every facial expression and every movement and every sound and every song and every every part of that film if you are not allowing it all to freely flow into you well then you're doing the film and yourself an injustice so just some just some thoughts from me about how to you know how to really get the most out of a film you know let your emotional guard down be be the main character be them that's the whole thing right suspension of disbelief so you're not the person that you are sitting there watching it you are the person going through it so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to now bless you with a few minutes from Jim Carrey's exceptional, exceptional commencement address from the 2014 Maharishi University of Management graduation, which was all in all we're looking at. I, I think the full one, the full one was about I don't know. I think it was about 25 minutes, maybe 25, 35, 40. I forget, but. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put about five, six minutes out there for you, and then you can go ahead and find the full one online and, and check it out at your leisure. I definitely, I definitely um, would implore you to do that. Follow him. Follow this man right now, because he's he's making a mark in a whole other way, and 
you know, if there aren't many people that you would listen to and you would listen to him, listen to him. He really, really has something to say. And it can change your life. So, here we go. I'm here to plant a seed today. A seed that will inspire you to move forward in life with enthusiastic hearts and a clear sense of wholeness. The question is, will that seed have a chance to take root or will I be sued by Monsanto <laughs> and forced to use their seed? Which may not be totally Ayurvedic. Excuse me if I seem a little bit low energy tonight, today, whatever this is. I slept with my head to the north last night. Oh, oh man, oh man. You know how that is, right kids? Yeah. Woke up right in the middle of Pitta, couldn't get back to sleep till Vata rolled around. Crazy. But I didn't freak out, you know. I used that time to eat a large meal. <laughs> Connect with someone special on Tinder. Because life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. How do I know this? I don't, but I'm making sound, and that's the important thing. That's what I'm here to do. Sometimes I think that's the only thing that's important, really, you know? It's just letting each other know we're here. Reminding each other that we're part of a larger self. I used to think Jim Carrey is all that I was. Just a flickering light, a dancing shadow. The great nothing masquerading as something you can name. <laughs> Seeking shelter in caves and foxholes dug out hastily. An archer searching for his target in the mirror. Wounded only by my own arrows begging to be enslaved, pleading for my chains, blinded by longing and tripping over paradise. Can I get an amen? <laughs> you didn't think I could be serious, did you? I don't think you understand who you're dealing with. I have no limits. I cannot be contained because I'm the container. You can't contain the container, man. You can't contain the container. I used to believe that who I was ended at the edge of my skin. That I had been given this little vehicle called a body from which to experience creation. And though I couldn't have asked for a sportier model. <laughs> it was, after all, a loner and would have to be returned. Then I learned that everything outside the vehicle was part of me too. And now I drive a convertible. Yeah, man. Top down, wind of my hair. Woo! I am elated and truly, truly, truly excited to be present and fully connected to you at this important moment in your journey. I hope you're ready to open the roof and take it all in. Okay, four more years then. <laughs> They're obviously not ready. This needs some more gutty. I want to thank the trustees, the administrators, the faculty of MUM for creating an institution worthy of Maharishi's ideals of education, a place that teaches knowledge and experience 
the knowledge and experience necessary to be productive in life, as well as enabling the students through transcendental meditation and ancient Vedic knowledge to slack off twice a day for an hour and a half. Don't think you're fooling me. <clears throat> but I guess it has some benefits. It does allow you to separate who you truly are and what's real from the stories that run through your head. You have given them the ability to walk behind the mind's elaborate set decoration and to see that there's a huge difference between a dog that is going to eat you in your mind and an actual dog that is going to eat you. <laughs> That may sound like no big deal, but many never learn that distinction. And they spend a great deal of their lives living in fight or flight response. Ladies and gentlemen, and there you have it. There you have it. A wonderful, a wonderful part of that, that speech that he gave. Please do go and check out the rest on your own time. I'll, actually, I will. I'll go ahead and, and post that on the fate.org website and uh, and then of course I'll put it on the Facebook page and I'll put it out. Please also do me a favor, um, don't forget to like, please like our Facebook page, please join the website, subscribe as a member so I can send you information and, and let you know about things that are happening and have you be a part of things and, and really interact with each other you know if you have any ideas if you have any questions if you want to be a part of something a part of a movement a part of a show um, part of an event you have someone that you think should be on on the show that I should do a podcast with so please connect subscribe as a member of the website um, you know in the near future I will be doing certain certain giveaways and a number of different prom promotions and I definitely would it, it would be great to have you all be a part of that and please spread the word share this podcast with people put the word out there about fate.org you know our, our missions are big we are reaching for the sky with the wisdom of the stars. Fate, the people's honorable alliance for exposing the truth. And that's what we're here to do, ladies and gentlemen. Expose the truth, bring it to you so that you can wrap your mind around these ideas, these concepts, so that you can start to unravel the transformation that's happening to you so that you can begin the transformation the transformational process or so that you can have a a point of reference to a direction to point people in when you have conversations out there with your friends and your family and acquaintances and people that you meet out there right because every one of those people and every conversation is an opportunity it's always an opportunity to gain knowledge and to share. So please do help to propagate my energies, my thoughts, my ideas, my love, our collective space that we're sharing here, the collective energy that we're sharing. And this movement is really a movement that we're a part of, you know, and, and the movement that we're trying to create, that I'm trying to create, is part of a bigger one. One that's already taking place, it's already happening. But it still needs us. It needs all of its working parts. If it's going to work in part. For that better future. Wait a minute. this program to bring you a special report ladies and gentlemen you know it was actually after i had finished 
cutting and editing this podcast, this episode, that an additional piece of information had come to my attention. And this clip is is truly astounding. And what it does for me is it, it really shows um, the fullness of uh, the, the knowledge base that, that Jim is diving into right now. And on top of that, it shows a whole nother level of of boldness because you know what he's saying is it's so it's so controversial and you know he's not the only one saying it i mean you know some of the um the uh the scientists that i follow um and who are represented on my website uh not only scientists but speakers thinkers astrotheologists quantum physicists and so on you know they're these things are so so cutting edge yet so right now, yet so ancient at the same time, um, you know, they're going to be met with a lot of resistance. Uh, and resistance comes before scrutiny, you know, because the, the first reaction, of course, is, is a defensive one because it just really uh, goes, flies, flies very strongly in the face of everything that most people have, have been taught and have been brought up to know and indoctrinated to know. You know, whether by the education system or uh, the religious institutions. And so what he's saying here is it's it's really mind blowing. And what it has done now, now that I see that these things have really reached, um, you know, people in that position to the point where, you know, he's saying it openly like that. You know, I'm going to speed up the the process uh, that faith.org is, is putting forth, you know, with my website, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a section for, um, for the adept, uh, for the initiates, so to speak, uh, for those who are ready for the deeper information that goes, you know, beyond the superficial, beyond uh, all of the obvious points of, of reference that that really show the the massive cover-up and and you know uh, beyond the education system the pharmaceutical industry the food industry the power industries and you know all that stuff because it, it, it there's much more beyond that much more and um so i'm going to go ahead and, and create that section for those who are ready but anyway i had to interrupt and bring you this clip i want you to pay close attention because what he's saying is accurate and it's it's life changing. I mean if you really, really take into account what he's saying, it's it's incredible stuff. And again, this is it's not coming from him. He's he simply um has opened his mind to this information, was ready for it, has taken it in and and has that same feeling that all of us do who come across this stuff and 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 are resonating on these frequencies we want to share that information we want to want to we want to give it to the world and that's what he's doing here so again jim hats off to you brother um let's uh let's do the do man i don't know if i'm i'm not quite as big as some of the other shows you've been on but but hey man keep me in mind all right ladies and gentlemen i give you another incredible clip from the awakened Jim Carrey. Do you know about uh, about uh, um, alchemical uh, sexual alchemy? Do you know that the story of Jesus, how it's been altered in certain ways? I mean, yes, there was a guy. Yes, there was teachings, all that stuff. The the parallel between that and alchemical sex is that uh, there's 33 vertebrates in your spine. There's 33 years in the life of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Okay. There is a, a substance or liquid or a, a, you know, a substance that comes from your medulla, which is basically completely looks like the uh, Ark of the Covenant, has, has uh, angel's wings around it, the whole thing. So this, this substance comes from your medulla, makes the tr trip down your spine to your sacrum, which is the, which is Quick, get a dictionary. <laughs> Christ coming down into human form. Yeah. And if you don't squander that essence, that sexual essence, 
it ascends again and goes back up to heaven, which is your thing. It's also the story of Santa Claus. Why he comes down the chimney is because this, this juice or this whatever substance actually passes what's called the claustrum, which is where they got Santa Claus. Uh -huh. So it goes down what the chimney the and back fuck? up the chimney. Please stand by for further details. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. I am the wordsmith, and I am about to sign off here to another podcast episode primarily dedicated to our friend, our family member, our brother, Jim Carrey. Jim, thank you again for, for all the years um, of brilliant, heartwarming, thought-provoking work that you've done and for the many more years of said such work that you will do and just as much if not more for that which you're doing now outside of your films thank you uh, i hope i definitely get to chop it up with you and uh you know kick back in a nice little holy holy space that we create and blaze on something nice And just really, really have a, a very meaningful, enjoyable conversation and, and shared time space. Jim Carrey. Thank you and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. I thank you for spending this hour and change with me. I know it's a, it's a long time. But thank you. And please spread the word. I have a lot more coming. I have a number of great guests that I'm lining up and I will get these podcasts out as soon as possible. I promise you they will be full of good information from highly qualified speakers. Really great stuff. There's just so much. It's so hard to you know, figure out where to go, what to start with first and all that kind of great stuff. But. But the more pushback that I get from you, the more you'll see me pump out. So please, you know, let me hear it. Let me know. Let me see the shares, the likes. I'm on Twitter. I got to start tweeting more. You know, some of the some of the newer social medias I, I haven't really pressed hard yet, but I'm starting to see that I'm going to have to. Especially Instagram, I gotta hit up Instagram more often. And um, and get ready, exciting stuff. Faith.org uh, will be working soon in conjunction with or, or partnering in some sort of way with a, a company that is putting together a line of CBD product. We'll probably start out with something simple, but the name of the game is healing. It's all about healing and helping people. So you better believe that it will be sold at an affordable price and it will be a quality product that actually works because that is the fundamental qualification that we're looking for in terms of sourcing the product so uh, until of course the uh, the company that we're working with will be able to produce its own at an incredibly higher level than almost anything on the global market anywhere today uh, using advanced sciences and technologies but either way we promise you it will be a product that works CBD the CBD product CBD the cannabidiol is one of the 120 plus chemical compounds found in cannabis very quickly gaining attention Lots of studies happening surrounding it. It has been treating and curing innumerable, innumerable illnesses, chronic and otherwise, repairing brain cells, stopping epilepsy, reducing inflammation, regulating sleep, regulating uh, hunger and eating 
the list goes on. Very exciting. Very exciting. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's all. I am your host, The Words Myth. Am I real? Am I just a phantom of your imagination? Am I you? Am I your voice? Am I a post-it note that you left for yourself from the future? Sent it back now to these times to get these messages across to you from yourself so that you could awaken sooner, so you can come to those realizations quicker, so that you could help change the world now before it's too late? Probably. All right, let me see you moving out there. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Ride safe, drive safe. Peace and love to you and your family, your friends. I hope to catch up with you. Fate.org. I'm out. Peace. Well... Wow.